If you're a Knicks fan, you should be very excited. Even though this series has been as sloppy as any Knicks series we've seen in the last 25 years. You haven't seen many. But this is a different Knicks team. You saw it in game number three. You saw it in Madison Square Garden. Jalen Brunson has changed what this team believes in. And we have believed in losing for years. This organization has a losing mentality. And now with Jalen Brunson and some of these younger players. Now, R.J. Barry had a very good game number three. He didn't look good for game number two. He was pulled. He didn't look good in game number one. Julius Randle is the bricklayer. So we don't expect him to be that 40, 50 point guy when we need him to be. But at least he's going to give you the points and the boards and the assists that you need him to stay into this game. Mitchell Robinson is going to do what Mitchell Robinson does. Block and rebound. But the Knicks need points off the bench. And finally, Quigley and Obi Toppin. These guys are going to play a big factor if the Knicks have any chance throughout the playoffs. The Cavaliers, they have two weapons. Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. And Garland was unstoppable in game number two. Six three-pointers. And the Knicks couldn't stop him. And in game number three, maybe because it was in Madison Square Garden, but Garland was not as dominant. And if the Knicks could shut down one of those guys and make the other one try to beat you by himself, the Knicks are going to win. This series has been defined by which wings collectively have played better. In game one, the Knicks' wings were very good. Josh Hart was very good, especially defensively. Quigley and Grimes still kind of iffy. And Barrett was fine. He got a going in the second half and was good defensively. But game two, everybody was awful shooting-wise, and the Cavaliers' wings and their point guards were very good. Game three was the total opposite. Darius Garland did not have that same level of a shooting touch. You didn't see a lot from guys like Karis LeVert and Isaac Okoro in that small forward slot. And the Cavs' bench depth really has not shown up as much as the Knicks by any means. The Knicks' bench depth was very good throughout the regular season. They were the sixth highest scoring bench. They've outscored the Cavs bench-wise by 20-plus points. The Knicks' rebounding, which I thought would be an issue for them, has not been as big of a concern. They out-rebounded the Cavs in game number one with a lot of their guards. Game number two was even enough, considering how bad the score was, but still wasn't the main issue of why they lost. In game number three, they definitely got it going again. Mitchell Robinson definitely was a big factor. And even Isaiah Hartenstein has been pretty good so far here in the postseason against these Cavs bigs that have been menacing all season long with that number one defense in the NBA. Hopefully the Knicks will get into a series where there has been good basketball, because this series has been absolutely horrendous basketball. But I believe the more grittier team is going to win this series. And Donovan Mitchell, I believe Donovan Mitchell wants to be a Nick. I believe Donovan Mitchell has wanted to be a Nick before he was traded to the Cavaliers. But Danny Ainge was not going to allow that. And you see the difference of what the Knicks are with Jalen Brunson. Maybe with Donovan Mitchell, they're a contender for a championship. But what the Knicks have done has been miraculous this year. Tom Thibodeau deserves a lot of credit. And finally, Tom is sitting players out, not pushing players to a limit. And that's been a huge problem for Tom Thibodeau over the years. He's been playing guys too long. In game number two, they sat Julius Randle for almost six minutes in the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter. And one of the reasons why he's coming off from an injury that they lost him for almost the last two weeks of the season. So you have to depend on your stars to show up in the game. And Jalen Brunson in game number three showed up. Julius Randle, when he needed to hit a three, he did. R.J. Barrett, when he needed to hit a three, finally, he hit one. If the Knicks do what they did at Madison Square Garden and they do it again on Sunday, I believe the Knicks are going to win this series. I already called the Knicks to win the series when a lot of people thought the Cavaliers were the better team. The questions, is this team good enough to knock off the Boston Celtics? Is this team good enough to beat the Milwaukee Bucks? And the only way anybody's going to take them serious is if they knock off this Cleveland Cavalier team, which a lot of people thought were going to be pesky in the playoffs this year. And the other thing, too, is they're doing it without Jalen Brunson's real A game yet. We have not seen it yet on a consistent basis in the playoffs. Now, he did have that great fourth quarter in Game 1. He did move the ball very well at the beginning of Game 1 as well, but Game 2 and Game 3 were not his typical self. Sometimes turning the ball over, he was sometimes making some bad passes, and his shooting touch really has not been there, especially in Game 3. If Jalen Brunson's A game can come out, that's going to take the Knicks to another level if these other wings can step up, because the wings really carried them in Game Number 3, and along with that defense being fantastic the way it was against the Cavs, they held them to 32 points in the first half alone. Mm. And that has to say a lot about what the Knicks' potential could be. The Nets are right now just on a cusp of just being embarrassed by a 76er team that, yes, they were the third seed, but I thought they were a team that they can compete with. And Doc Rivers, who I don't think is a good playoff coach, <laughs> I thought they would at least win one game in the series. But down 3-0, I can't see them winning a game in the series. The 76ers have dominated them on the boards. They're dominant on the perimeter. They've been shooting the ball. Lights out the 76ers against this Brooklyn Nets defense. Joel Embiid is the best player in this series by far. There's no superstar on this Nets team. 